Say, this is my Bible. I have what it says I can have. I can do what it says I can do. It is inerrant, infallible, incorruptible. Today, I will be taught the word of God that will go into the soul of my heart and produce not 30, not 60, but a hundredfold. I decree my mind is attentive. My heart is receptive. I shall, I must, I will be changed in Jesus' name. Go over to James chapter 3 verse 15. That's toward the back. Now let's go up to 13. James 3 and 13. Are you there? Amen. Okay. I just want to make sure I'm in the right place here. Yep. 13 says, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. Say the meekness of wisdom. There's a wisdom that comes with meekness. I won't have time to get into that. The meekness of wisdom, 14. But if you have, a, if you have bitter envy, it go bitter again. If you have bitter envy and self-seeking, self what? In your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above. But it's earthly. It is sensual, demonic. There is a demon. See, this is an opening when you think you're operating in wisdom, but it's really worldly and demonic wisdom. Let me finish reading this verse 16. For where envy and self seeking exists, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. Then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield. Willing to what? Yield. yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now, that, this is a whole different wisdom. Now, that sensual, demonic wisdom wants to be right, right? <laughs> it's self seeking. And there is confusion in every evil thing. So it's amazing that when this wisdom is sensual and demonic, there's, there's every evil thing there. Because that's not the wisdom of God. It's demonic wisdom. So you think the devil going to tell you you're wrong? He going to pat you on the back and say, you okay? Keep going with this. Walk this out like this. You deserve to be like this. That's a demonic wisdom. See, there is a wisdom that is from God that descends and comes down, and then there is a, a earthly, sensual, demonic wisdom. Worldly wisdom, doing things the way the world does, is demonic. That, that eye for eye, tooth for tooth, is demonic. This is a door. Operating in false, earthly wisdom is a door. Do you even consult God? Or are you just like, I know what to do? That's, that's earthly. That's sensual. That's demonic. Did you ask God how to handle it? I'm going to go over there and just give him a piece of my heart. And the Holy Spirit say, go over there and give him $50 and tell him to have lunch on you. See how, see how quiet it got? Because, see, see we, we want to do it the, the fleshly way. We don't, we don't want, he said, bless them. That, that what? Curse you and despitefully use you and say all my, he said, bless them. He didn't say curse them. People that hurt you, you need to send them some flowers. Thank you. What you thanking me for? You was instrumental in me getting into my destiny. You were instrumental. If it wasn't for you, I don't know if I would have made it. 
and they gonna get prideful like I knew I had a part to play. They don't even know. They don't even know. <laughs> they don't know what you're talking about. Let them, let them think that. You was a part of my, my destiny. <laughs> See, I, I couldn't just I just couldn't just have the valleys and just walk through the valley. I had some mountains. So you was a mountain that helped develop my muscle and my stamina. So thank you. Thank you for doing it. And don't you say thank you for lying on me. Thank you for, for betraying. Don't now see, don't, don't do all that. Because now you're gonna get back in the flesh. Don't do that. So, so, so let's go through them again. Um, no root of death in the word was one. The root of bitterness that springs up, that develop over time, that was two. Number three, not taking heed to the word of God. Then this one right here is operating in a false or earthly wisdom. Now go back over to the book of John chapter six. I could go up, but I'm going to try to hit start at verse 53, and then we'll explain it as we go. John 6, 53, are you there? Amen. Then Jesus said to them, most assuredly I say to you, unless you eat the flesh, say flesh, flesh. of the Son of Man and drink his blood, say blood, blood. you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day, 55. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him, 57. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father. So he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. 59. These things he said in the synagogue and taught in Capernaum. Verse 60. Therefore many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, this is a hard saying. Who can understand it? 61, key scripture. When Jesus knew it in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, does this offend you? They began to complain because, see, you know he wasn't talking about cannibalism. They knew that. But see, they were so stuck on tradition and the law that they did not embrace what he was saying. He was like, until you take another step of intimacy, until I become your bread and I become your life source, then you don't have life in you. He was like, I am the bread. See, the, the manna was symbolic of the real bread. The manna could not give them eternal life. It just gave them substance for that day. But he said, I, he said your father's eight men are dead. But he that eats this bread that came from heaven will never die. So he was saying there has to be a transition from the law and from all these um, rituals that you have into relationship. And they did not want that level of intimacy. Because it says in one place that many of his, his um, disciples didn't walk with him anymore after he made this statement. Why? Because they were good with the fish and the loaves. They were, they were good with just having a cute sermon and him providing their needs. But when he said, now it's time to kick it up, there has to be another level of intimacy. They, they, couldn't, they said it's a hard saying. And so when a person does not increase in their level of intimacy with the Lord, that's a door for offense. Because what did he do? He asked them, does this offend you? Does me talking about uh, another level of intimacy and relationship, does that offend you? And that offends a lot of people in the church. Because they'll tell you, Mr. Kenny, oh, it don't take all that. It don't take all that. Who are you to say what it takes? When you create you a world and a man and put him in it, 
and put provision and resources in that world that will last until you destroy that world, then you can tell me what it takes. But until now, I'm going to listen to the one that created everything. Do you realize when people tell you what it takes, that is an enemy, that is a, 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 <laughs> that is a mole of the devil. <laughs> he is in there trying to put this thought in your head of how much it requires for you to be right with God or what God requires. No, God told us what he requires. You don't let people tell you how much it takes. What does the word say? Jesus said, eat my flesh, drink my blood. Covenant. The blood represents covenant, y'all. Can, can we just take two, two minutes to deal with this? Remember when they had the Last Supper? And the Bible, we, we, we say communion, but we don't really know what it means. We just do it because, you know, that's what tradition said. But when he, he had the Last Supper with them, he said, um, this bread is my body. That is broken for you. This is what I'm going to go through. I'm going to be broken for you. He said, take, eat. All of it. And then he said, this is my blood in the New Testament. This is a new covenant. It wasn't just they were just having a regular Passover. No, this was prophetic. He was like, okay, just like Abram, the first covenant was blood and animal. Okay, I'm being, I'm the sacrifice. I'm the perfect lamb. I'm the scapegoat. But this, this symbolic of my blood that is going to be shed. So he's saying Unless you drink my blood, unless you enter into this new covenant. See, Abraham's covenant was not designed to get you into eternal life. The bread in the wilderness was not designed to get them into eternal life because a lot of them went to hell because of their murmuring and complaining. But he said, this is the bread that came down from heaven. And if you eat this bread, if you receive this, you will have eternal life. So he was saying there has to be another level of intimacy. You cannot keep hanging out in the outer courts. You got to come closer. And they were, they were having some issues with this. And he said, does this offend you? Does this cause you to stumble? See, see when people start talking about greater level of intimacy, relationship, that caused some people to stumble. Why? Because some people don't want to give up their old ways. Some people want to keep doing what they've done and think God is just going to accept that. No, he's not going to accept that. Because he said much is given. Much is required. He said in James chapter 4, verse 7, I believe, he said, if you draw nigh to me, I'll draw nigh to you. So we have a responsibility of drawing closer. Not to letting people tell us what it takes. Right, right. I'm amazed that people listen to people that know they ain't got no relationship with God. Right, right. It don't take all that. How do you know? The, how do you know? Have you ever prayed for the sick and they recovered? Have you ever cast out a devil? I'm, I'm not getting help. Now, what have you done so significant that you can set the parameters for my relationship? What have you done? Yes. Have you seen the glory of God? Have you experienced God on another level past your understanding? Past your theological, philosophical uh, training and thoughts? Have, have you experienced God, not religion? See, it's one thing to know the Bible. But it's another thing to know the God of the Bible. A lot of people know the Bible, but they don't know God. You don't get to know God in the book. You know about God in the book. You know God through relationship. Oh, man, I got nine minutes. Oh, God. So lack of real intimacy, right? Oh, my goodness. (laughs) <laughs> Y'all remember, uh, let me see, I'm just going gonna, gonna to throw this out there, I'm not exactly sure, other scripture, uh, let me see. Y'all remember when John was in jail, and he sent his disciples to um, ask Jesus, was he the one, or should he look for another? But the thing about it was, he's the one that 
had this, this covenant with God, he was the forerunner. He knew. He knew who Jesus was. And, and, and they, they basically, you know, Jesus out here doing work. You said you got to decrease so he can increase. And so now he in jail. No, I'm, 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 I'm trying to show you something. So now he's in jail. And he sent his disciples to go ask Jesus now. You ain't asked the rabbi, the priest, you asking Yeshua himself. Yeah. They go ask Jesus, say, yeah, John told us to come ask, are you the one? Yeah. Or should he look for another? First of all, you're not looking for anyone because you're in prison. Right. But it's amazing how when things not going the way we think they should go, how we can flip the script. How we see, see, people switch up on you. Don't see, don't be so impressed by people uh, applause and they praise because them same lips that praise you today will be trying to destroy you tomorrow. You can't take praise too serious, and you can't take when people criticize you too serious. <laughs> you got to learn how to keep it moving with both. And so, here the disciples they were crazy enough to do it. I'm not going to go up to Jesus and say, are you the one? John, I love you, but that's a conversation that's not going to happen. And so here here they come up to Jesus. He out there doing ministry. Why he got to stop doing ministry to deal with this foolishness? Why he got to stop to deal with offense? He said, go tell John that the deaf here, the lame walk, the leper that's cleansed, the, the mothers have their dead delivered back to them. He was like, yeah, tell John that this is the miracles that are taking place. But he said, but before you leave, tell him, blessed is he that is not offended in me. Yeah. Yeah. Don't come this far, John, and miss it because of offense. Yeah. That's right. yeah. He up there in the jail offended because Jesus didn't come and rescue him. Your assignment was over. Your assignment was over. When your assignment is over, get out the way. Don't get offended. And now Jesus is saying, blessed is he that does not stumble over me. See, you better settle some things. You better settle some things. You better know why you're in this. Oh, God. You better know who you're trying to please. And you better know that you're going to go through some stuff for the kingdom's sake. But you do not use that to make an accusation against God. Don't get offended because life happens. Don't get offended because church people talk about you. Don't get offended because... People that's in the house of God may hurt you worse than the world. You're not here for people. You're here for God. I'm amazed how many people leave the church. Oh, they, I got offended. They, they hurt me. And they, they hurt you on your job. Did you quit? Your boss man cussed you out. Did you quit? I just want to know, do, do we have the equal opportunity levers? Because your job, people offending you, you didn't leave because you lacked the paper. Oh, y'all. Your family reunion, you got offended. You didn't leave the family. See, church is the only place where people play these games. Did God tell you to leave or your emotions? Because emotions are made up of two words. E and motion. E means up. Motion mean away because your emotions will lead you up and away every time. Did the Lord tell you to do it or did your emotions tell you to do it? It's amazing that your emotion never told you to leave your job. I'm just being real. I'm just because you know we play games in the church. That's why I don't go to church now because people ain't real and people hurt you. Well, they ain't real on your job. They're not real in your family. You know Aunt Susan now talking about you as soon as you walk away from the punch bowl. You know, you know it's drama in the family. But 
that the church is the only place where we feel like we just get a pass to walk away from my assignment where God has connected me to and from what God has called me to do. Everywhere else, you know, I'm going to say, but the church, that's why I don't go to church because they ain't real. Well, they ain't real on your job. Stay home. Why you go to work? Why you buying t-shirts with the family name every year, going to a different city at the family reunion? Won't you walk away from the family? Why we play stupid like the church because of the church? No, ain't the church. You don't want to go to church. Stop lying on the church. You better stop talking about the church. Jesus died for the church. He said, my church, not your church, not my. He said, my church. Upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. You better stop talking about God's church. Talking crazy about his people. God know how to deal with his people. We just want to tuck and run. Why you not running from everything else? That's that's my only question. You in the club, your girlfriend talking about you when you walk over to the bar. Why you not walking away from the club? Why you didn't say, oh, I ain't going back to the club because they ain't real. Hypocrites in the club. Why you didn't say that? Go ahead. Come on. I'm not getting help. I'm just trying to figure out what's wrong with us. Why are we lying on the church and lying about our real reason? Your real reason is you refuse to grow up and mature. Stop blaming people for your dysfunction. Your neighborhood talking about you in the meetings. You ain't left your neighborhood. You ain't felt led to move. Why the church? I got to quit. I, I knew it was going to get quiet. And they be trying to be deep too. You know, I'm, I'm so fed up with deep people. I'm apostle. But most of them don't even tell you they gone. They just go. You don't even hear back from them. They just go. You know, you done prayed for them, watched over their soul, loved on them, and then all of a sudden they don't even have the courtesy to tell you that they leaving. God going to deal with that too. That's right. That's right. Hey, let's go. It didn't merit at least a letter or an email or a visit or something. Couldn't keep you out of my office when you was here. Now all of a sudden you're leaving. I can't even get you to come and tell me you're leaving. I'm not going to get help. It's kingdom investment time. Praise the Lord. Y'all, we got to get real. We got to stop playing these games. Oh, I didn't finish my point. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Um, apostle, this, this is if it happened, but very rarely do it happen. Uh, apostle, I just feel that my season is up and the Lord is leading me to do something else. Okay, where is he leading you? Well, I don't know yet, but I'm going to find it. Well, how, how is the Lord leading you to an empty place? How is God leading you to nowhere? And what do you mean your season is up? You, you, you reached it? You reached that maturity? You've done what God called you to do? What people really need to say is I'm offended and I don't care what you say, I'm out. Thank you for watching Transforming Lives. We hope that this message has been a blessing to you. Our mission is to raise up a body of believers that demonstrates the power of the word in every arena of life. Sowing a seed to our ministry will help to fulfill our mission. There are multiple ways to give to WLCI. You may text to WLCIG to 54244 or give through our website at www dot wordlifecenter.org or you may also send a seed offering to post office box 293 Kannapolis North Carolina 28082 the word of God says give and it shall be given unto you thank you in advance for supporting Word Life Center International hello I'm Apostle Jeff Sanders of Word Life Center International and I want to invite you to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. 
If you haven't made this decision, I promise it's the best decision that you've ever made. And I just want to encourage you to pray this prayer with me. It's real simple. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God, that you died on the cross, and on the third day you got up with all power in your hand. I ask you to come into my heart. I receive you as Lord and Savior of my life. Forgive me of all my sins. Cleanse me with the precious blood of Jesus. And Father, I vow to serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, you're saved. Now you need to take the next step, get connected to a Bible teaching church. Uh, wherever your area is, find a church that teaches the uncompromised word of God. If you're anywhere within driving distance of Word Life Center International, we would love to have you right here at 1124 Rosewood Avenue. And if you need to reach out for prayer or anything, the information is on the screen. Let us know that you receive Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. We don't have any way of knowing how to pray for you or that you've made this decision if you don't reach out to us. So I encourage you to do that today. And until next time, remember to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. To any man, because he knew what was in man. Now, now that didn't mean that Jesus did not trust people. It means that his life did not rise and fall on people. He knew what was in men, so he did not entrust himself to any man. So you couldn't offend him because he didn't let you get that deep in him. When it comes to offense, do we take responsibility for allowing people to have that much of an impact on us? We here at WLCI would love for you to come visit us where our pastors, Jeff and Michelle Sanders, teach the uncompromised Word of God. Their mission is to raise up a body of believers that demonstrate the power of the Word in every arena of life. Come visit us at 1124 Rosewood Avenue in Kannapolis, North Carolina. From the author of Occupy comes a new bestseller, Capacity, the ability to hold and handle what has been given. Order your copy of Apostle Jeff Sanders' newest book, Capacity, now available at Amazon.com. Capacity is available on paperback and also on Kindle. Let's stay connected. We have multiple ways for you to connect with us. Please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. For more information about our ministry, visit us online at wordlifecenter.org or call us at 704-298-0845. Thank you for joining us today in Transforming Lives. We pray that the message has blessed you and that it has pulled you closer to God and His Word. Until next time, remember to be transformed by the renewing of your mind.